everybody, Casey here. I miss y'all so much. I miss our discussions. Um, but let's get right into it. So, as y'all know, we had this huge final paper. I hope everybody did well on it, but for mine, I chose to discuss the topic of embodied cognition, which, as we all know, is, you know, theorized by Pythagoras, three centers of knowing, body, heart, and mind. And embodied cognition is react, feel, and think. And so, in my paper, I thought of how that connected to me. How was I going to be able to explain this in a more personable way? And I thought about it. I'm an artist. I don't just react. I don't just feel. I don't just think. I do all of this and more on top of, wait, that can't be it. Imagine for a second, instead of it being a cycle, instead of it being one, two, three, one, two, three step process, the steps for embodied cognition include aesthetics and rendering and imagination and process. It's more than just one, two, three, one, two, three. And so take a second to think about this. There's a fourth level to this. And I believe that everybody possesses it. I'm just in my paper and in this presentation relating it to being an artist. And the fourth level is what I'm calling create, the active tense of reacting. The first reaction is passive. It's where we just, you know, acknowledge what we're seeing, what just happened. And then the second one is feeling. We bring in our emotions, we emote from it. We, you know, process it just a little bit deeper and then thought. We think about how are we going to react from this feeling? What are we going to do? What is this next step? For artists and so many others, the creation is that doing. It is that culmination of body, heart, and mind processing. It is more than just, hey, I'm just going to do this. Hey, I'm hungry, so I feel hunger, and I'm going to go eat something, but you don't you stand in the fridge. I'm actually going to eat. And so in my presentation, I decided I was going to actually, you know, videotape myself making artwork, going through this fourth dimension of creation. I'm reacting to what I'm seeing in my parents' backyard, all the colors, the shades, the hues, the light changing constantly. I'm reacting to the music that I'm listening to. How does that make me feel? The colors, the pastels, the materials I'm using in my hands. I have pencil, pastel, charcoal, um, ink at one point in the beginning of the video. And all of these together are changing the way I'm visually perceiving what I'm looking at. And that's what I discussed in my paper, how each level, there, the cycle itself is, no, is not a cycle, it's a spiral. It's renewal of the energy you're putting out. It's when you react the first time, you go straight into the feeling, but the feeling has unconscious and conscious content that is involved in making you identify what you're feeling. And those unconscious and conscious content change your visual perception of the thing that you just reacted to. And the same thing goes for the thinking process. And then the same thing for the create, going into creating. But what I wanna say is that when you create, you create, you develop new unconscious and conscious content that changes your visual perception every single time you look back at that thing, or that original thing. In my case, in the video, my visual perception changes every single time I change the camera, every single time I pick up a new color, every single time I look back at my subject. The creation process changes the way I'm reacting to the environment in front of me, which creates new unconscious and conscious content. I know that if I take this little brown crayon and I go over each little thing, it'll make it more defined. And that's me using my art knowledge. And then that changes my visual perception. How dark can I make this area? When I keep looking at this, I notice something new. I see something else, a new section. Maybe I should mush this in. Maybe I should shade this darker. Add a color here, which is again, unconscious and conscious content constantly changing. That's why I say it's a spiral. It's a rabbit hole. It's a constant motion, an embodiment of movement. 
it's kinesthetic as um, Husserl, one of the philosophers I wrote about in my paper, I'm pretty sure I butchered his name, but kinesthetic understanding and processing, it's embodied cognitive aesthetics. <laughs> I'm seeing what I'm looking at in different ways every time I look up from the page in front of me. Every time the song changes in my headphones, every time I sit back and change a color, every time I, this light changes, the wind blows, the visual perception is shifted. Each reaction develops new unconscious and conscious content, which develops a new visual perception, and it keeps going around the spiral exactly like that. So that's essentially my cycle as an artist and like I said earlier this doesn't just apply to artists it applies to everyone it applies to chefs and teachers and doctors it applies to Dr. Hart himself you know his unconscious and conscious content of what he knows about psychology shifts every time he talks to us you know his visual perceptions of us as people change every day he saw us this past year and every second we had in this class. But that's pretty much it. I miss y'all. Have a great summer and I wish y'all peace, love, and light.